Good going, May, all the way. It's been more than three years since we returned from our round the world trip. And since then, life has changed a bit. Matt became a dad. I bought some potted plants. But our love for three wheeled adventures has never faltered. Last year, we headed to the Ural Experience Centre in Portugal to try riding a Ural sidecar, and wow, were we impressed. That's a great game. Second. We now are the official Ural dealers in the UK and run our own sidecar experiences, showing people what three wheeled adventures are all about. It seems if we're not on three wheels, we're dreaming about three wheels. But something's been missing and we came to the conclusion it was sidecar life on the road. With our new commitments, we couldn't head off on another 15 month trip, but perhaps we could quench our adventurous thirst with a Ural US road trip. So here we are, Ural headquarters, sidecar is paradise here in Seattle. So back there, they've got loads of sidecars and one of them we're going to steal uh, or borrow and ride it to Los Angeles. So from the top to the tail of the USA. Should be fun. After a 10 hour flight, we were in Sidecar City at Ural HQ in Seattle. We'd never seen quite so many sidecars in one single space. And it was brilliant to meet the super busy team. Suddenly, our three-wheeled masterpiece was revealed. Right there, oh. there you are. Wicked. All right, Thanks, man. Enjoy. Cheers. You guys be safe. <laughs> yes. We'd be taking this trip on a Ural Exped, which had been accessorized perfectly for the road ahead. Definitely one of those things whereby the um, it's the same but the complete opposite. We're having a cycle on the right hand side, which I definitely think is going to take some getting used to. But um, I like it. I think it'll be fun. I think, as I've always thought, three wheels is the perfect way to travel. So I guess it's about time we start thinking about hitting the road. We had 10 days to make it from the top to bottom of the USA before Matt's baby forgot who he was and my plant shriveled up and died. And to really find out what this Ural was capable of, we'd be doing the majority of the trip off-road on the backcountry discovery route, which was also known as the BDR. Rock, paper, scissors. Yes. Whoever, whoever wins rides first. Yeah, okay. One, two, three, and go. Yeah? yeah? yeah. All right, one, two, three. Go. Ah. Oh. Mate, you need to cut your nails. Just fist bumped your scissors, and it's genuinely cut my hand. Right, mate, here we go. Here we go, mate. On the road, leaving Seattle. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm really excited to be leaving Seattle. We were off, heading east towards Idaho for Washington State. The further into Washington we went, the scenery only grew better and better. But we couldn't help but be a tad concerned by the constant air of smoke. We've seen helicopters flying really low above us, you firefighters flying past and that sort of stuff. There's so many forest fires out here, there's so much, so much smoke going on. It was so fantastic being back on the road, and the following morning, we'd be crossing into Idaho. Different, yeah. Bit, bit, bit creepy, it's a bit awesome. Yeah, bit, bit creepy, but yeah. But you know, 
You expect someone to come past on a penny farthing, don't you? You do, yeah. You do expect someone to come past on a penny farthing. Not seen it yet. Let's get saddled up and get out of here. Mm. <clears throat> One state down, with three to go. We're in Idaho, heading for Wallace and the start of the BDR. Wallace was a historical old mining town, but as Brits who were heading through an Asai car, we couldn't help but think of another Wallace. Where are you, mate? <laughs> it was time to head off road and venture well and truly off the beaten track. We'd be wild camping this evening and we were in bear, mountain lion and wolves territory. That was unbelievably foolish. Um, we got out of there, but a bit of advice. Next time, just take the road. So much easier. Well, that was good, mate. That's what a two-wheel drive's for. Yeah, it is, yeah. But it was unnecessary, I think. Unless the whole thing's unnecessary, <laughs> mate. It's just good fun. There is that. Always fun, isn't it? Yeah, get, getting back out camp, while camping, that sort of thing. I haven't done it for a few years, really. Sort of just pitching up. Well, it is clearly a designated campsite, but no one's here. It's not monitored or anything. So, Are you worried about anything in particular? Or? Well, you can't help but think that bears and mountain lions are on your mind, mate, can you? But um, you know, just hope they don't pop up. Well, if they do, they're friendly. Really damp as a location, so. I'm going to see if I can light the fire. Get this puppy on. Get boil. It was a damp, cold night. And to this day, in those conditions, I'm still not sure how Matt got that fire started. Come on, catch it, catch it. Right. Oh, oh. oh my god, <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> We've got fire, mate! I told you I could make fire! That was something else. I should have put this tree in over here. Jesus! Come down to the woods today and in for a big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> We've had no bear attacks in the evening. Someone shot that sign though. As we left the night's camping spot, we needed fuel and food.
we zigzagged our way down to Pierce, where we left the BDR ever so briefly to pick up some much needed supplies and get some advice from the locals. Uh, I'll tell you what, you guys, uh, that's a pretty good off-road bike. I yeah. would go up on top. Might we see bears out here, or wolves? Uh, there's bear and wolves. Uh, Idaho and that got taken over with the wolves. That devastated our air curves. From here, we look to continue our off-road journey from Riggins, following the Salmon River and beyond. To be fair to this Ural, mate, we've been hammering it now for like, I don't know, how long? Four days? Yeah. And it hasn't skipped a beat. No, yeah. We've definitely, um... Oh, he's he! He's going way too fast. Yeah, he is, yeah. Fucking heck, that was lucky that we weren't like on a more of a blind bend. Yeah. Fortunately, mate, we weren't going way too fast, otherwise yeah. we could have been side car suit back there. Yeah. The mountainous climbs were really putting our riding skills to the test. And the steep drop-offs meant we couldn't afford any mistakes. As we pressed on further inland, we once again came across evidence of huge forest fires that had raged throughout the peak of summer. It meant there'd be no campfires tonight, but we wouldn't need them in our truly unique camp spot. Right, so we've just ridden probably another 100 miles of the BDR and we've found ourselves in this extremely unique town of Warren. Um, which we didn't really think there'd be any, anything here, and it turns out there is. Um, there's five people who live here all year round in the middle of nowhere. In winter, it gets completely cut off, and they fly supplies in on the airstrip two days a week. And tonight, we're going to camp on the airstrip because we've spoken to the five people who live in town, because they're all in the one pub, and they said you can camp wherever you like. So we're camping up just next to the airstrip. Um, it is a bizarre place. It's an old gold mining town. It used to be thriving, and now five people are just sticking out here. So they're going to stay here, probably drink a lot of whiskey, and probably get pissed in Warren. Five people live here. Warren's airstrip was a one of a kind camping spot. And to keep warm, there was only one place we were going for the night. It's absolutely Baltic this morning. Oh, we're going to get the jet board on and then make a cup of coffee, but... Let's up on that. There she blows. The problem is, the water's ice. It's quite slushy, actually. It's kind of coming out. The kind of stuff you had on your head this morning, mate, from the inside of the tent, isn't it? The sun was up. We instantly felt warmer and were ready to press on. The scenery throughout all of the Idaho BDR had been incredible and we'd not seen any bears, mountain lions or wolves, which I think we were secretly pretty pleased about as this snake was more than enough to give us a fright on the road. Ooh. Oh mate, I'm scared. Oh my God. The Ural hadn't skipped a beat, and next, we'd be crossing state lines into Nevada.
We were in Nevada, heading for the Wild West, where the roads were long and straight, the desert was vast, and the topic of conversations were just strange. They call him John Jacob Jickelheimer Schmidt. Na, 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 na. John Jacob Jickelheimer Schmidt. Hey, mate, do you think Goldilocks was harshly treated by the bear? I'd be fuming if Goldilocks just came into my house. If I made myself some pretty good porridge and I just nipped out for half hour. John Jacob Jickelheimer Schmidt. His name is my name, too. I wouldn't be that bothered, mate. Is it a nice girl like Goldilocks? She can have any porridge she likes. Whenever I go out. Always... There goes John Jacob Jinkelheimer Schmidt. Na na na. Hey mate, a couple of bikers giving the international signal. Rock and roll, fellas. God, we are lucky, aren't we? Just riding along in a in a Euro on a sidecar. Are your best bud? Okay, mate. I rode through the desert on a horse with no name. Good to be out of the rain again In the desert, you can't remember your name There ain't no one enough to give me your pain La 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 So, we've just uh, pulled in off the uh, desert highway after about 150 miles of absolutely nothing to a small town called Austin. We? I've never been anywhere like it. No. I've never been anywhere like Austin before. We're it's... at the International Hotel. And it has character. <laughs> We're running out of time, by the time to get into Los Angeles. But I'm excited for this. Yeah, it should be good mate. Here in Nevada BDR, hopefully be able to camp out somewhere in the wild. Hotels because if I'm honest, it's a bit haunted. You it does. Yeah. yeah. It's lots of like dolls looking at me out the window. <laughs> so this, mate, would have been. The kind of scenery, and this is the exact location or part of the route where the uh, Pony Express Trail was. Well, back in the 1800s, I don't know the exact date, where um, kids were just put on a pony and sent off with the mail from the East Coast to the West Coast. And uh, just to take the post, basically. And they, and they had kids as young as 11 just set off on their own bag of letters, deliver it to the other coast. Really? Yeah. What, from one side of the states to the other, you mean? Yeah. That's too young to be doing that. Yeah, that's an adventure, mate, I'll tell you now. The Pony Express Trail, they called it. We'd made it onto the Nevada BDR, and were once again surrounded by stunning scenery that led to a fantastic camp spot for the night ahead. The best part about this spot was our discovery of natural hot pools, which it turns out Nevada is pretty famous for, as we weren't the only ones enjoying time on the road. It, that little town is called Kingston. Yeah, and as I travel around, it's like hot springs and bars. Come down there, are we? Uh, we so come down that one. I think you're on, you're on this one. Yeah. yeah. So somewhere in here is a place called Round Mountain. <laughs> Whatever, I think it's a place you drive by as quickly as you can because it's... Yeah. It was pretty amazing to think how just a few hundred miles north we'd been tackling huge mountainous climbs. And now we were keeping pace in the desert, making our way through the rutted sand. ventured further south, edging closer and closer to Los Angeles, 
and with Death Valley around the corner, it was getting hotter and hotter. Death Valley holds the record for the warmest temperature ever recorded on Earth at 56.7 degrees Celsius. It is seriously hot here. I hate to state the obvious, but I just didn't think it was going to be that much hotter than sort of 50 miles up the road. When we were coming to Death Valley, we were thinking, we've done a lot of desert. It can't go much better. And it has. It has got considerably better, hasn't it? Yeah. And if you're willing to put up with the heat, I'd recommend it to anyone. Yeah. Just bring an air-conditioned SUV like everyone else. Yeah. Or drive really quickly on your sidecar. Oh, yeah. And um, oof, next stop, I don't know, where's the next stop? A cold can of Coke somewhere? A cold can of Coke before taking on a few of these trails or after taking on a few of these trails to get out of here because yeah. it's still pretty tricky to navigate. This is fantastic riding. Yeah. What a spot Death Valley was. We'd even travelled there off season and still reached 38 degrees. Arriving in time at Los Angeles was now a certainty, but not before we'd passed through the Alabama Hills, one of Hollywood's most used film locations, largely due to its incredible rock form. It was a perfect way to finish off a fantastic Ural US road. Over the past 10 days, we'd ridden through four states, 2,200 miles, and over half of which had been off-road, taking on the backcountry discovery route. The Ural had been unreal. Matt's daughter would still remember who he was. My plants would survive, and our adventurous thirst had been quenched. Hang on. Okay, and shoot, mate. Right. Oh god, that's it guys, like 11 days on the road, 2,100 miles, 4 states, and we've made it from Seattle, off-road quite a lot of it from the BDR, down to uh, Rossa Corsa, just outside of LA, but we're going to give this bike back, it's been amazing, had a great time, the bike's been brilliant, and um, yeah, Look forward to the next Psycho Adventure, I suppose.